You're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm Ryan Hill. I'm John Galantis. You can find us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. Or if you have any questions for Dr. Shah or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028, or you can email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. That's right, and we want you to help us keep the conversation moving forward by supporting the show. You can share it online with your friends and family. Leave us a good five-star review on iTunes or Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasting content from. We're going to leave you a couple of links right there in the description, so you can do just that. Ryan, it's finally Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. Happy Friday to all our listeners out there in radio land, podcast land. Hope you guys are doing good. Hope you made it through the week okay. If you didn't, hey man, you got a little clear view today. Pick me up That's right. to get you through that last Happy day. Happy Friday to me, to you, and to everyone you love. Happy Friday from me. Happy Friday for free. Hey, um, I got another grapevine. Oh. Two grapevines in a week. Back to back the gripe grapes vines. are ripe unto harvest. <laughs> Welcome to the gripe vine. <laughs> when I got saved, <laughs> when I got saved, wait, 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 wait a minute. That's not the gripe. <laughs> Welcome to the gripe vine. When I got saved. If I could just be very serious. What? When I got saved. Why are you griping about salvation? I'm not griping about salvation. What is happening? I give up cussing. I gave it up. Okay. That's good. I didn't have to give up a deviant like lifestyle like you know what i mean like i was sure, not on drugs i was right. not drinking i wasn't uh, i wasn't uh you know murdering people i, I didn't have to give up like a, a lot of okay, vices sure 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 um one of the vices i did have to give up was was swearing oh that was difficult for me okay i still had words i could use to express myself if i dropped something i could say dang it darn it oh my gosh you know i could say things like that i didn't realize that when i had children that would be taken away completely. Hundred yeah, percent. That's gone out the window. Already giving up swearing was hard for me. Yep. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. I wish I could say I never said a cuss word my entire life. I did. I said a whole lot of them, and that was really tough. But by God's grace, I did it. It was. It wasn't like I achieved this thing. God helped me to do it. Yep. But I still had those words where I could express myself. Right. Like, Dang it. You yeah. know. Some people don't even like that. But. You know, I, I was, hey, I was an adult. Still am an adult, but for some reason now, when you have children, mm-hmm. things get real, real restrictive. Yep. I can say that things are silly, and I can call people a rascal. That's about it. Yep. That's the only recourse I yep. have. I don't know what to do. Y- you got to change your vernacular. Come on, you man. Gotta just, you got to just change it. You got to change it. Could be, and here's why. Because, I mean, it's one thing as an adult to say, oh, dang it, or oh, shoot, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I can't in say a, shoot. In a, in a conversation. It sounds much different coming out of your three and four-year-old's mouth. <laughs> that is, that's much different. If you have a four-year-old that goes, oh, dang it, like, oh, man, <laughs> I really don't something. want you saying that. They drop something, and they're like, shoot, I really shoot five. I really don't want you to say that. <laughs> so you got to change what you're saying, like, ah, oh, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fiddlesticks. Oh, dandy. Applesauce. <laughs> Like sugar I, snap peas. I I used to be cool, man. I used to be cool, You're cool. Uh, but I can't be cool if I drop stuff and I say applesauce, yes, firecracker. You can. Yes, you can. It, you know, I'll tell you why. Because you got two little boys that think you're the coolest person on the face of this planet. I get that, man. I get that. But like, okay, like, okay, okay. It's getting to the point now where like I can't say, oh my gosh, right? I can't say that in the house. Ellie gets angry with me. But Goofy says it on TV, and if that's his catchphrase. Well, oh, be Gorsh. Fair, to be fair, Gorsh is a little uh, softer, I guess. I, I, I don't know what it is. Mickey says it. He'll say, oh gosh. <laughs> no that problem. good Mickey. Thank you. I hear it 24-7. <laughs> Mickey Mouse can say, gosh, yep. no problem. Gavin says it or I say it, we're in trouble. Yep. Now, if Mickey Mouse has cleaner, la- has has dirtier language uh-huh. than me in my own house, there's a problem here. We're get- I, I I just feel like we're getting a little bit too restrictive with with the with the language here. You know? Do, do, have mean, you have you submitted requests for like is this acceptable? Is this acceptable? Yes. Like, what is yes. What is in the realm of acceptable vo- acceptable vocabulary? They all. Uh, I mean, just silly stuff. Sure. Silly is fine. We can say that things right. are silly. Like, hey, you're being very silly. Or, or um, no, because silly's kind of good. I don't know. I don't know. Stupid is out. Idiot is out. Those things I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to say to the we're, kids anyway. We're in very different places in our parenting journey. Really? Yeah. Because you can say stupid now. Yeah. And you can say yeah, like I look at my kids and be like, hey, you're being an idiot. <laughs> yeah. No. Stop making dumb choices. <laughs> yeah, we can't say dumb. That's what I'm saying. Like 
anything that's inherently negative, we we can't really say unless it's like, hey, you're disobeying or you're not listening. Oh, yeah. that, those are fine, but but I can't. I just can't use expressive language anymore around the house. So we've I, we've reached the point in parenting now where we're just really sarcastic with our kids. Mm-hmm. Like I'll look at my kids and be like, hey, it costs it costs you nothing to not be a turd. <laughs> it's completely it's completely <laughs> free for you to not be a turd. I want to get there. I want to get. You will. You'll I want to get back to you'll where I could speak freely. And not have to worry about whether a toddler was going to repeat what I said. You'll get there. Okay. I, you got you got some time because you got one that's leaving the toddler years and, and one, one that's, that's about one that's, to one be, that's become a toddler. In the toddler yeah, years. yeah, true. So and then you know that's not counting any galantuses that come behind them. that are that are on the way. So, so yeah, my language is going to be squeaky clean, but right. I'm going to sound like a dork. Like imagine dropping something and be like, "Oh, firecracker." Cheese and crackers here. You sound like from like a 1920 show. I sound like Ned Flanders. By golly. <laughs> I don't even think golly is, is, yeah. Well, okay, so golly is fine, but golly can't do that. Oh, so it's the inflection that's important. It's, yes, I okay. guess so, because I'll be like, golly. And then uh, Gavin will be like, golly. And she'll be like, see, that's why I don't like that. That's why I don't like that. So, uh, But if I say golly, no problem there. Hmm. I, I don't get it. Somebody needs to make it make sense because it don't make sense to me. <laughs> All right. If you are a parent in the toddler years or you have walked as a parent through the toddler years, write in and let us know what those words were for you that were acceptable in the realm of toddler speak, <laughs> but still let you get your frustration out. That's right. Two five eight two five zero two eight, Or you can visit us online at the silliest website, <laughs> clearviewtodayshow.com. We'll be back after this. Hey, brother, can you, can you, can you not do that while we're recording? What is, what is, what's wrong with you? I'm in the middle of talking. He's, oh. he's cut. He's getting us oh. into the ad, and you're stinking. Oh, jeez. Come uh, on, man. That's not good radio. What in the world? This guy. This guy right here. Hey, what's going on, listeners? My name is John. And I'm Ellie. And we just want to take a second and let you know about Dr. Shaw's new book on the market right now called Can We Recover the Original Text of the New Testament? Boy, that is a long title. (laughs) True, but it's a very simple message. The original text of the New Testament is not only attainable, but there are lots of different ways that scholars go about discovering it. There's a lot of people out there saying that the original text is lost forever or that it's hopeless to actually try to find it or that there's many texts of the New Testament. But alongside Dr. David Allen Black, Dr. Shaw has actually compiled papers from some of the world's leading experts in textual criticism, including one written by himself on various methodologies for extracting the original text. And listen, if you're interested in textual criticism, This book is a great introduction to the field. You can pick up your copy on Amazon or you can buy it from our church website. That's clearviewbc.org. We're going to leave a link in the description box so you can get your copy today. Love that. Ellie, let's hop back in. Let's do it. Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abaddon Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. If you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text at 252-582-5028. That's right, and we're here once again in the Clearview Today studio with Dr. Abaddon Shah, who's a PhD in New Testament textual criticism, professor at Carolina University, author, full-time pastor, and the host of today's show. You can find all of his work on his website. That's abaddonshah.com. Dr. Shah, happy Friday, my friend. <laughs> happy Friday. What is that? <laughs> Stop it. My alarm's going off. Your alarm at for 3.54 p.m. Yeah. On Sorry. a Friday Sorry. afternoon. It's okay. Sorry. What's happening at 3.54 specifically? I don't know. <laughs> Recording of the Clearview Today Show. Yeah, there you go. To shut my it's all good, down. man. It's all good. It's shutting down. <laughs> no right worries at all. Now. Very, very yeah. cool. Yeah. I wanted to ask you this. Yes. Little kids. You don't have little kids in the house no more. Right. But what was what was the cutoff for what they were allowed to say? So shut up is right out. Stupid, idiot, dumb, all that stuff. Can't say that in the house. Dumb, maybe. They could say d- Could yeah. they say, if they dropped something, could they say, oh, dang it. No. No dang it. Could they say, I think I ate too doggone much. That's fine. That's fine. So, okay, they could say that. Yeah. What but ab- they never said that. What about, um, let's see. Crud. Crud. Could they say crud? Crud is fine. Okay. So, <laughs> so the shot kids, see, my kids... If it were up to me, they could say a lot more than there, but they're on lockdown. Okay. They can't say, oh my gosh, 
they can't say I agree with that. You you don't like oh my gosh. Yeah. See that's my thing is then but then they shouldn't be watching Mickey Mouse cuz Goofy says gorsh all the time and Mickey Mouse says gorsh. What does he say? <laughs> gorsh. 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 Yeah. Gorsh. What is a gorsh? I don't know. <laughs> Goofy's accent coming through I guess. What was Mickey you said Mickey says Mickey gosh. said he'll say <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> I really just wanted you to do the. Uh, I know you did. I, I was going. I was willing to give it to you. So, so some things they were they they could say as little kids. What do you remember? Any where you were like, "Hey, I really don't want the kids saying that." Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. There were there were there were times they would say things like that, and and you know we were mm-hmm. like, "Hey, uh uh-uh. uh." No. <laughs> yeah. No. That, one, that one's right out. No. Yep. Yeah. It's tough with little kids because I I I mentioned this, and we can talk about this a little bit later. I didn't have to give up a, a whole lot of bad behaviors when I when I got saved but but swearing was one yeah and it was a struggle and so it was before I had kids I could find creative ways to still get that expression out yeah and it's it's tough because when you when you spend a lot of time swearing you get so used to it it loses its edge so you want to keep finding stuff to, <laughs> to have that edge but then I was like okay I'm saved now I'm a Christian I'm going by God's grace I'm gonna I'm gonna give this up mm-hmm. and and he helped me do it but then I had to give up even more when I had kids and it's like life is I feel like I just say the silliest stuff now just to get the, <laughs> the don't expression make me come there <laughs> I, I, I will I will I will get up on this couch. jack this whole house <laughs> flapjack <laughs> oh man you guys are making me see red i've had it up to here like i, I see now you why got your bottom dollar partner yeah <laughs> buster brown you better sit it you better park it buster i see now why people portray dads as such like ned flanders style clowns because yeah. you can't say <laughs> you can't say i remember i and i don't know if you remember this i remember one time we went to go see the eclipse in in uh, Georgia. That's right. And someone cut you off while you were driving. And I remember you being like, oh, you rascal. And I said, anytime <laughs> a pastor calls someone a rascal, you need to know. You have well and truly They did up. not want to call you a rascal. <laughs> <laughs> no other things in mind. The, oh, yeah. <laughs> There are several things that I would like to say. Oh man, that's that's oh, kind of what we're talking about today. Funny. Our verse of the day today is coming from John chapter ten, verse eleven. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Hmm. Words of encouragement there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Words of encouragement. Well, Jesus is our good shepherd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we are sheep, and sometimes we wander away. But he's a good shepherd. He mm-hmm. comes and he rescues us. True. He looks for us. True. And then he brings us home. He will leave behind the 99 to mm-hmm. go for that one. Mm-hmm. Amen. I remember that song that we, that Corey Asbury song, that reckless love where, you know, people got so up in arms over that song, but I did love that line where he said he leaves the 99 and cause to the world, I, I, I kind of get, we didn't actually really have a problem with that song that we, we played that song a lot. It just sort of phased out. But um, I, I thought that was such a unique thing because we don't talk about him leaving the 99 like that. And mm-hmm. that is, to the world, that's a reckless thing where it's like, well, you're going to put all these other sheep in danger to save this one. Yeah. But what happens when I'm that one? Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah, I'm very grateful for that. <laughs> yeah, at one point one. in my life, I was that one. Yeah. So we should, just like Christ, in his power, go out and rescue the sheep. That's the right. Sheep right. Lost. Uh, and, and what better time to say that when we are still focused on helping our neighbors mm-hmm. uh, to the western part of our state mm. who are still struggling, who are still having a difficult time, and there are people out there helping, and that's what they're doing. They're yeah. trying to rescue. They're trying to find ways to help them. That's right. And uh, you know, we've heard a lot lately about what they're allowed to do and al- not allowed to do and all that. It's just kind of crazy right now. Yeah, some weird things being coming out. Yeah, but just be in prayer that mm-hmm. God will open doors that not a single person who is – Waiting to be rescued will be um, will be abandoned. Yeah, mm-hmm. will lose hope. A hundred percent. And there have been people asking us, writing into the show, saying, "Hey, these are some really weird times. Things are happening. When are you guys going to talk about that?" We are. You know, we'll yeah. we'll talk about it when when it becomes relevant. And when we have enough, you know, to really form our arguments. We don't like to just fly off the hip and start talking about things right. as soon as the story breaks. But That's of right. course, we'll we'll talk about it. But you know, today we are talking about. You know the things that we say. You know, Doctor Shy. I mentioned that earlier. I I gave up swearing, hmm. uh, but it turns out new. <laughs> as talk about story breaking. Breaking news. Breaking news. Christians actually get to cuss now. Did you believe, Did you know that? Well, uh, I heard <laughs> prior to the show that that is uh, that is the new thing. It's the new thing, and and um, you know, it's 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 uh, backed by the Bible apparently. In fact, oh. you, if we all want to just kind of play this video I found today, I sent Doctor Shy this video last yeah, night. I saw it. And uh, this guy, 
I don't know. He's got some interesting things to say. Mm. Okay. Okay. So in full honesty, I've changed my mind a little bit on cussing. When I look at the Bible, it's very clear. The Bible says that of the overflow of your mouth, your heart will speak. Okay. Immediately pause for just a second. That's not what the Bible says. <laughs> out of the yeah, overflow does. of your mouth, your heart will speak. No, no. Yeah, it's it out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth will speak. Same thing, it's right? It's backwards. No. Hold on, wait, say, it's backwards. Play what he said again. Over the, Out of the overflow of the mouth, the heart speaks, is what he said? Yep. It says out of the overflow of your mouth, your heart will speak. No. So the more I this talk... <laughs> this is <laughs> the, my heart's gonna get dirty. Yeah, right. yeah. The more I talk, I guess my heart just kind of keeps coming out. I, 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 I give, up, I give I uh, my brother over there a little pass because maybe he just misspoke. He just sure. probably misspoke. I think yeah. he misspoke. Right. Yeah, but but here's the thing. I, I'll, I'll, You're I not agree with Doctor Shot. Yeah, but maybe you made a mistake. You're coming in with a real controversial take. Christians should be cussing. Yeah. If you're gonna come in with a controversial take like that, man, you need to you need to have a better start. To also, your, if you're your coming argument. in confident like that, you better you better get your verse. That's right. the thing. So we talked about this before on the show. These guys are so smug. They come across so. I don't mean that. Say are so smug. They come across so smug and so yeah, like. Yeah. I've figured Let this out long this ago. Hidden information. Mm -hmm. Go. All right. Go for it. Serious that we can actually see where our hearts are at because of what we say. But I also look at the scriptures and I see that there's times and places for intense language. Jesus calls the Pharisees you brood of vipers. Paul calls That's not a cuss. the Pharisees and says, if you're so concerned with circumcision, just emasculate yourself. Cut the whole thing off. So there's times where the Bible actually, I think, uses intense language to prove a point. That's not cussing, though. So what does it mean to cuss? Because, I mean, if I come to you right now and I say, oh, I've got this bloody test tomorrow, we're in the United States. We don't think that's a bad word. But in Great Britain, that's a bad word. But that's so a different issue going on. Right. Here, he's talking about cussing or not cussing. Right. And then he's talking about different cultures right. and what is acceptable and what's not. Those are two, two different issues going on. Right. Also contextual. It's also cultural. So there's certain things I can say in this culture that I can't say in that culture. So that means there's that there's also microcultures. That there's cultures within my family with my children that I shouldn't say certain things and I shouldn't say with my wife. So yeah, pause it for a second. The Bible. That's true, but what does that have to do with with morality? Yeah. Right. Like like yeah, that's fine, but that doesn't mean that. Say that like swearing is accepted. Is he trying to say there's no such thing as act like objectively bad words? Is that his point that he's trying Maybe. to make? Maybe I'm not sure. Okay. When it says cursing, I think oftentimes what the Bible is talking about is actually giving a curse to the person, saying that person is this or that person. I wish this upon that person. That's what the Bible is also talking about. I think the Bible also talks about speaking out in sexual immorality, having a mouth that's impure. The Bible talks about all the time that again that comes from a heart, and that should be there should be no improper language spoken among you, is what the scriptures say. So nothing improper should be coming out of your mouth, but only such is what builds up. So the goal of our, our language is to build people up. And oftentimes that comes in a form of a rebuke in some ways. And sometimes I think there is room huh? for some colorful language, but I think it should only be spirit led. Start again? Might uh, uh, that, that, that section? If he, you do that one yeah, one? he said, yeah, yeah. Built oh. up. So the goal of our, our language is to build people up. And oftentimes that comes in a form of a rebuke in some ways. And Pause. Some I don't think this guy knows what words mean. Yeah. it We build people up by rebuking them. Is that what he's saying? Rebuke means to scold someone, right? Let but me he, make sure. He's saying, yeah, it, it does. Okay. What he's saying is I can rebuke you, but in the process I'm doing you a favor because that's going to help you <laughs> and correct you. Okay. Which to be a better person. Sure. Fine. Okay. I can get on board with that. But then he then he just jumps to, and I think, you know, that, that leaves room for colorful language. There's a lot of I think happening. Yeah, what does that have to do with cussing? So, okay, I get what he's saying. He's like, okay, so there's no objectively bad words because what's good in this culture is bad in another culture. Fine. But you live in this culture. Mm -hmm. So you so you abide by the rules of this culture, right? Right. Like like if I went to England and I said, "Oh, I have this bloody thing or whatever," and they said, "Hey, we really don't like that." I'd say, "Okay, cool. That's that's yeah, not I'm acceptable sorry, I won't here." Say that. So if I'm here in America and there's cuss words in America, <laughs> right? And and people are like, "Hey, that's a cuss word. You shouldn't do it." Why now am I being like, "Well, actually, there's no cuss words here." Yeah. See what you have to understand about microcultures is <laughs> what? No. Yeah. All right. So we. Sometimes I think there is room for some colorful language, but I think it should only be spirit-led. And people might take this totally out of context. I'm not saying cussing is okay. 
Uh, what? I'm saying where I have gotten to in my faith is to realize that Jesus is always caring about the heart. And there's times in the Bible where this intense language is used. And so if we're to prove a point in order to build someone up, in order to call them back to Christ, then I think sometimes intense language is necessary, even to call out evils. Um, but on the whole, I still think cussing should be taken captive and we should not do it as Christians. Stop Which it. Which I 100% agree. Yes. You, the whole, <laughs> the first sentence in this video was, I have changed my mind about cussing. He spent a weird, what is this? Two and yeah, two minutes like and 20 two, seconds? Yeah, two yeah. minutes and 20 seconds and he has said nothing. Yeah. Yeah. He has made no point. He has just, it has been a complete circle. Let the video, let, let the video finish. Take what I'm saying as like, you can go cuss now. I'm saying that there are some moments, there are some times where I think um, it actually emphasizes the truth that we're trying to tell. Dr. Shaw, will the Holy Spirit lead me to cuss? I just need to, no. I need to know. <laughs> I mean, and again, what is cuss word? I think his, his, his discussion should have been a better structure. Yeah. He should talk about soft cuss words versus the harsh ones. Uh -huh. Harsh ones, I'm talking about when people use sexual mm -hmm. lingo, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the harsh, yeah. crass kind of. Right. That's what harsh cuss words are. Mm -hmm. Soft ones, you know, the gosh darn kind of stuff. Yeah. I think those. That's, that's a soft. I think what he's saying there is a soft one is okay. Mm. Uh, I don't think he would really go the hardcore cursing. Gotcha. Hardcore is usually sexual in innuendo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that's... What Real crass, against. vulgar, yeah. Blue, yeah. blue stuff. But I, I think he would be okay with using uh, the H-E double hockey sticks. Mm -hmm. Some of that um, Some of that uh, going on. Yeah, yeah, he will use the D-A... Yeah. Um, that like the one. Beaver's House mm -hmm. kind of Beaver's thing. Beaver's House. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, to... <laughs> To go back to what he was saying in the video, like the Bible talks about cursing as like pronouncing a curse upon someone using that, like a beaver's house using mm -hmm. that. Isn't, is that not the same thing? Because you are talking about yeah, I would that say person so. being condemned to hell. I would say so. Yeah. But in this situation, I don't think a person is really trying to condemn someone to hell. Uh, it's uh, like, like people are upset over what's happening in the Western part of our state. Uh -huh. The, 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 the inefficiency of our government, whether it's national or state, it has frustrated people to no extent. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes people say, D, mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. do something. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get that. You know, that, that's that's what I think would be considered in this context as, oh, that's okay. Right. Because you're really trying to get your point across. But if I <laughs> were to use another word which talks about sexual intercourse, right. Mm -hmm. Would you still have the same effect, or would you say, "Hey, that's a little much"? <laughs> what are you doing? Well, fight? Yeah. I mean, that's what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. that's. I don't know if I approve that. Yeah, yeah. I I don't think the spirit is going to lead you anywhere where you're going to be using language like that. So like, I I, get, I don't think God is signing off on yeah. like, "Hey, this cuss is okay here." I get what he's saying in a sense. Not that I agree with it, but I understand it because it's what I spent the majority of the intro griping about, which is I I, I want to get this feeling out. And I'm I'm restricted from using the words that so far have helped me get this feeling out. But my point is those feelings don't need to get out that way. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to. I thought I used to. I thought I used to think I needed to swear to be funny or make my point or let people know like the gravity of what mm -hmm. this is. But Dr. Hill, you actually gave me uh, you, you told me one time. Who was it? It was the comedian um, that that. That sc scolded the guy. He was teaching a, a comedy class, and the guy Steve was Martin, cussing. Wasn't it? Was it Steve yeah. Martin? Yeah. He where the guy was cussing. He was like, "Why are you cussing so much?" He was like, "Oh, it's to just make it flavorful." And he was like, "You're not. If you're cussing to make yourself funny, then you're not really as funny, not, as, you not not as, funny as you think." Funny. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. a great yeah. point. Yeah, I think that's that's what we need to keep in mind. That yes, we can get upset, but. To cuss, I get it. I get. I get what he's trying to say. In the moment, you're just passionate and you're trying to drive that point home. And hey, just do it. Won't won't cut it. And you want to say, you know, d it. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. You know, get it done. Mm -hmm. And I and I get what he's doing. Mm. 
I don't know. Yeah. It's this also, not. I feel like, opens up a larger discussion about becoming a stumbling block to people. Because if you are in leadership where people know that your reputation as a Christian or as a, a prominent leader, a voice for Christianity, and you're using this kind of coarse language, they're going to make all kinds of assumptions. May, and wrongly, I mean, they shouldn't assume things about you, but you have a responsibility to people. Well, don't be a stumbling block. Well, 100%, because I can tell you this just from, from me, if, if you guys were to start like swearing, I would start swearing. I mean, it, it, I would I would fall back into behavior that I previously felt very convicted over. Mm-hmm. Right. If if the environment around me allows for it, right. and I know, like, hey, I'm not going to, you know, I'll that conviction may come later in life, but it won't come while I'm here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I remember being convicted about that. I mean, I was like 17, 18. I had been saved for like three years before I actually started working on cleaning my language up. <laughs> but I remember that how real that conviction felt. And, and so I, I think what you're saying is right. You are a stumbling block. And I mean, we're, we're Christians. We right. ought to not be, uh, we ought not to look like we, the world. Right. We should that's look the whole, Our language should be different. Yeah. That's the whole point. Yeah. And Dr. Shah, I've always, I've always found your language to be very inspiring without having to resort to, you, you don't have to enhance. <laughs> Remember that SpongeBob episode, those sentence enhancers? Yeah. You don't have to find creative, cool ways to communicate your point. Yeah. I've often found that the, the brief pointed truth that you give is often way more impactful than someone's fiery colorful speeches yeah that go on forever and ever right right it's uh so much better to have that clever witty remark but i know for many of us the clever witty remarks don't come (laughs) when we need them (laughs) they'll come later yeah <laughs> yeah, three hours later when I'm like taking a shower before bed, I'm like, ah, oh, I wish I would have said that. I'm gonna call him up. <laughs> I'm gonna call him up and say it now. Yeah, and I mean, we want to be Churchill, but right. we end up just being what? Uh, like oh, the, uh, a chipmunk. No, it was it no, <laughs> no. Who was the guy? He who was the guy he replaced? Chamberlain. Chamberlain, the guy who couldn't <laughs> that nobody liked. Yeah, we we want to be Churchill. We end up being Chamberlain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> don't want to be Chamberlain. Hey, I got happens. this from wasn't it Chamberlain who got it? Got the the notes signed by Hitler. Yeah, I got. It yep. from Hitler himself. And, and he's not going to invade nothing? Nope. He put his name on a you piece see of this? paper. Mm. This is the paper. Uh, he just invaded Czechoslovakia. Oh, hate that for you. What? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's he took it. <laughs> put, put it I'm going to put it back in my pocket. <laughs> he, he, <laughs> his mom hung it up on the refrigerator. <laughs> We're going to put it right there. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Chamberlain, no. No, oh, but I mean, it's, for, it's the, this is the same, this is the same, uh, drinking thing you know yeah. can can we do it and and i don't feel like people do this one hit this one as hard as they do with with the drinking thing yeah. we, we did an episode on that mm-hmm. but it's this the same thing it's like it's something that you shouldn't do it's like i know but does the bible call it a sin am i allowed to i know you think i shouldn't but can i <laughs> it's yeah. the wrong question yeah yeah 100 percent. that's right that's right I, I i i know there are times life will be frustrating but i promise you it'll be more frustrating with people in your own life mm-hmm. and, and you will lose your cool with them. And, um, you know, and that's where it really comes down to trying to, from the pulpit, use it, especially to pastors. Don't mm-hmm. do it. Don't do it. Yeah, don't it's, do that. It's never a good reason. Or in a Sunday school class, or sometimes youth pastors have done that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've seen. I've even heard professors doing that in their mm-hmm. classes. Hundred yeah. percent. I had seminary professors have done that. I yep. I went to. I went. I was at a Christian seminary. A co- I was at the college at the Christian seminary, and I had a D group leader who did it. Yeah. And he thought it made him cool. Yeah. And mm-hmm. at the time, I was like eighteen. I had ju- And the thing is, I had just stopped. Yep. Like I I got saved at fifteen. I didn't stop until about seventeen, eighteen. So I mean, you think about that. I was just stopped at, after having that conviction, <laughs> and then he started doing it. Yeah. And I was like. Oh, this place he is kind of. does kinda, it. I can do it. Yeah, too. I was seriously. I I wasn't offended. I was like, this place is kind of cool, we and had, it set me back a little yeah, bit. We had a speaker at a men's retreat. Not before I started coming to Clearview. We had a speaker at a men's retreat who who swore in his uh, in his presentation. Did it really? He did. Oh yeah. And I mean, his his point was to be like shock value, which worked. I mean, the guys were shocked, but I don't remember anything that he talked about other than the fact that he cussed. Yeah. <laughs> That's a so good that point. was my actually. Takeaway. Defeated his. They defeated the entire point. I don't remember anything that he said other than the fact the time that he cussed. Yeah, that's all I remember. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to sound like SpongeBob no. and Patrick, man. That's what y'all sound like when you cuss. Seriously, it, it sounds silly now. It sounds silly to me. It doesn't sound cool anymore. Yeah. And um, I think it's it's one of those things that y- there's no positive. You don't need to. In- if you need to enhance your speech that much, I feel like you just need to get better at speaking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 100% that and that agree. that has helped me tremendously because when I restrict myself. 
uh, even creatively, when you start taking all those things that make you comfortable away, you stretch yourself and you become mm-hmm. more comfortable with yeah. Yeah. with uh, how you communicate. That's right. Be yeah, more absolutely. purposeful. That's right. In what you're saying. Absolutely. And there are times you may be upset, but I don't know. Plan out. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. L- don't let your emotions drive you. Say what you mean to say. That's right. And uh, out of out of the overflow of your mouth, your heart will speak. <laughs> nah, I'm yeah, just keep talking. Probably You'll- made a mistake. <laughs> Very cool. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, write in and let us know two five two five eight two five zero two eight, or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow dot com. Don't forget, you can partner with us financially on that same website. Scroll to the bottom, click that donate button, and let us know it's coming from our Clearview Today Show family. John, you got anything you want to plug? Yes, two things. Number one, our album, our our very first album, Heaven Here and Now, it drops in two days. Yes. Two days. So uh, make sure, or three days. No, it's two days. Yeah, yeah, two days. Not counting today. It drops on the 13th. Make sure you pick it up. Other thing is November is getting closer. Make sure you buy Dr. Shaw's book, 30 Days Praying for America. Yes. Now is the time. Seriously, we've been talking about it all this time, all summer, but the day is drawing close, and we need you guys to be voting your biblical values. Make sure you b- pick up that book. It's going to be in the description below. Absolutely. You guys have a wonderful weekend. Find somewhere to plug in, worship with God's family. We'll see you bright and early Monday morning for a week full of great content. We love you guys. We'll see you Monday on Clearview Today.